people talk Real about talk, it, I ain't throwing shots. all of the elements. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that you guys are off to a great start for your week. I hope that you are pursuing excellence uh, in every aspect and element and component of your life. I hope that you are able to see beyond the momentary stressors, the momentary disappointments and frustrations to see the end goal and the final destination, which is your destiny, and understand that absolutely nothing can stop you from achieving your destiny. Uh, I just wanted to put that out there. Next, I want to encourage all of you who really and truly believe in the work that we are doing at the Odyssey Project with uh, initiatives and programs like Black Men Lead, Rite of Passage uh, for Young Black Males, for Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, working with young black females who are uh, at risk um, and helping them heal from trauma, helping them make better decisions, uh, pointing them in the right direction. Uh, and a number of other programs that you've heard about over the time, including my research program, which allows me to develop uh, the aforementioned programs. Uh, one of the things that I've prided myself in is being aware of what my people are going through, but also, more importantly, understanding why. It is at the cause that you create the healing and the change. And so for those of you who believe in that, I encourage you to continue to support us. There will always be a link in the description box of my videos that you can show your love and support. Um, and we definitely appreciate it. Now, on with why I'm here. I hopefully won't take too much of your time. Uh, sometimes I can get a little energized and passionate about what I'm talking about and go for longer than I had anticipated. I have a very busy day. There's a lot going on for us at the Odyssey Project along with uh, my business endeavor. So today is an extremely busy day, uh, but I posted uh, something. I'm going to read you the entire post and then I'm going to tell you why I'm here today. I posted something along with a picture uh, uh, that showed black love and a meme uh, that is still on my uh, YouTube channel uh, and I believe also on Facebook if you want to check it out but I'm going to read to you what I wrote I said we live in a social culture that has waged an all out assault against the institution of marriage the number one weapon being used is individualism I teach married couples that I work with that there is no room for competition uh, and, and uh, distancing in their home. You win together and you lose together. One cannot win without the other winning. Also, one cannot lose without the other losing. This is what becoming one is all about. The romanticization of marriage has not helped either. As soon as the butterflies are gone and the honeymoon phase fades, people are ready to give up and start over. Marriage is more about covenant and purpose than simply how someone feels at any given moment. It is about the commitment to finish what you start as a team. It is seeing beyond your own selfish, selfishness to discover the potential resting within your marriage. Is it, about, it is about the merging of masculine energy and feminine energy to create a synergy which is a synergistic force that takes each one further than they could have possibly gone alone. And we lose that. I further went on to quote Gary Thomas, which says, what if God's design for marriage is m to make us holy more than it is to make us happy? Now, while that has a religious connotation, um, I didn't mean it to have, I, my, my purpose of posting that wasn't that. And then I finished it with, we miss out on 90% of the potential of our lives by spurning the institution of marriage in lieu of selfish pursuits, then wonder why the world is in moral decline. Again, uh, the quote by Gary Thomas, who is a Christian writer, uh, wasn't so much about the Christian element of it as it is about the meaning and true purpose of marriage. We think marriage is where we go to heal and where, where we go to feel good. You should be feeling good about yourself before you 
arrive to the point of getting married. You should know who you are. You should have did your work. Uh, you should have done your work to heal. And so marriage is a place where you come together to create a partnership and a commitment and a covenant and a contract that says together we have some unique goals that focus and center around a certain set of values. We are coming together so that we can perpetuate our values, interests, and principles through future generations. And the way that we do that is from a marriage creating a family. We come together, we create this balanced synergy by bringing masculine energy and feminine energy together. And then we procreate and we then inculcate the values, interests, and principles we hold dear into the psyche and minds of our progeny. And then through that we build out and we create a world that is conducive to us achieving everything that we desire, everything that we believe in. But if you cannot hold the family together at the core foundation, the marriage, you have a problem with maintaining a collective society through which you can function and operate and do things. It is very difficult, trust me, I've been doing this for 30 years, to teach a 25, 35, 45 year old about group economics when they have a consumer consumerized mindset. They, 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 they are zoned into consumerism. They believe that their, their value is hidden in what they can buy instead of what they own as an asset that appreciates. That's just one element, but you got to teach all of this. You got to teach the importance of men being men. And what I mean by that is not just how much you make to be a provider. See, that's the commodification of men. We've commodified men, especially black men, down to how much they make. And we have made it a point to talk about what, how many bills they can pay. The problem is, is that you got a bunch of men now who are making good money and paying bills but don't know how to treat their wives. You got a bunch of men who on the outside look successful but don't know how to father their children. Why? Because they bought into the lie that their value is solely hidden in how much they make. We've got a lot that we need to instill in our children and it is best done in an environment where there's both masculine and feminine energy. There's also a powerful force when you bring us together and operate out of love instead of obligation, out of love instead of out of lust, out of love instead of out of need. And you come together and you understand the value of the covenant is greater than any individualized selfish pursuits. It doesn't mean that you don't aspire to be the best you. You should be. And your spouse should facilitate it. But what you understand is, as much as I may able to get, be, get as much as I may be able to get on my own, I can't possibly get as much as I can get with a partner in place that to hold me, encourage me, inspire me, nurture me, uh, 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 speak into me, male and female. Uh, both speaking into each other, both nurturing each other, both holding each other up. I can't possibly get as far individually minded to where I can think of myself without thinking of my partner. I can think of myself without thinking of my children. I can think of myself in, 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 in an individualized set because all I see is my trivial and pursuits and they're not trivial because they don't produce something that the world may see valuable they're trivial because they dismiss what's most important and you have to understand this so when i was writing that i'm talking about if you trace history if you go down through the annals of time and you study the fall and the rises of empires and its civilizations and, 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 and groups and races and everything, you can find at the core of it all is how they value the institution of marriage. You have 
four primary institutions that govern social societies. The first institution is the individual. You yourself are an institution because in yourself you make unilateral decisions. You can operate, you can impact and in, 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 you can impact and influence the world around you. That makes you an institution. The second institution is the institution of marriage. Now the institution of marriage is where now you're starting to operate in your nature. What do I mean by operating in your nature? Operating in your nature is understanding that humans are classified as mammals. Mammals are one of the strongest components or characteristics of a mammal is mammals are social creatures. Mammals operate best in a social environment where they come together and they operate in unison with one another to produce a desired result. They don't fare as well as uh, they don't fare as well as an individual out operating on their own. They lose some of their effectiveness. They lose some of their sense of purpose. They lose a great deal. Matter of fact, if you isolate a person long enough, they will begin to hallucinate because they have to have social engagement. Their minds will create friends, adversaries, and so much more that don't really exist, but exist for the purpose of them still continuing. That's how powerful the need of social operation is. But we tend to operate as individuals. But the marriage is the second institution. The third institution is the family. The third institution is the family. The family cannot exist without the marriage. When you try to create family without marriage, you go out of order, you create chaos, you end up with what we're dealing with now, antinomianism, and all out chaos. Finally, there's some form of government. Our government is definitely not a government that we would want to use as a model, but there's got to be some type of government, whether it's at a local level, whether it's at a community level. And it actually, the, the, the level of government exists in every home. There's a governing process. There's a set of rules, there's a set of operations, there's a set of expectations. That's government. That's how it operates, and it operates at national levels and every other level beneath and even on a global level, but there has to be a form of government. So government is the fourth institution, but none of them can exist beyond the first institution of individual, but more importantly, the institution of marriage. So marriage is an extremely important institution. We have begun to spurn it. We have begun to dismiss it. We have begun to uh, believe that it's not necessary. We have begun to believe that we can operate without it. And what we don't understand is that outside of religion, the marriage still has a massive purpose. And that while we may become disenfranchised with what we discover about religion, we cannot sit up and spurn the concept and truth about marriage because it's self-proven. Rearing children in single parent households don't work. Entering into relationships lightly without a covenant guarantees that the marriage or the relationship won't last. There has to be an understanding of the idea of covenant. Those vows have to have meaning. You have to be willing to sit up and say, hey, look, this is what it is. This is what I'm committing to. And if you can't commit to the marriage, you're going to have problems committing to anything else in life because marriage is that heavy. And the problem is we live in a world now where I think in 1972, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, 1972, 1973, somewhere up in there, uh, the law, the divorce laws in states, in most states changed and they introduced the irreconcilable differences clause into re a reason for divorce. It used to be you had to prove that your marriage was dissolvable, that your marriage could not stand. You had to show infidelity, you had to show abuse, you had to show financial uh, irresponsibility, you had to have some reason for leaving. Now irreconcilable differences I mean we're just not on the same page anymore. We're not going to try to get on the same page. We're not going to put any effort in. We're not going to fight for the marriage. We're on, the, we're on a different page and we're going to go our separate ways. Let me tell you something. Anything that you put time into with an individual other than yourself 
there are going to be times you're not on the same page. There are going to be times that you're not seeing things. There are going to be rough patches. That's life. If you go through life alone, you're going to have rough patches. Now, the thing is, you got to fight through it. You got to see the value in what you start. The problem is, too, a lot of people are entering into marriage lightly. Why? Because they can get out of it easily. So I'll say I do. Why? When I get tired, I still just go before a judge say, we ain't on the same page. Get a divorce and move on to the next one. We have to start valuing marriage. And we can't wait until we get the age I got before I caught it, before I saw it. I always wanted to be married, but I didn't get it. There is no perfect person. There is no person that's going to like everything I like, do everything the way I want them to, and just jive with me all the time. That person does not exist. You've got to work with what you have. you got to find somebody that you really, truly believe in. you got to center in. you got to sit up and say, I'm going all the way. It's the distance you're prepared to go that's going to set the level at which you pr perform in this world. If, if you're not willing to go the distance, there's always going to be something that shuts you down. And that's in marriage. That's in business. That's in parenting. That's in every other relationship you're ever going to have. You're going to have to be willing to go the distance. We don't have a commitment to go the distance. We don't value marriage. We miss it. We got so many people that believe we just go through the world through the world willy-nilly and uh, men hitting whatever they can hit whenever they want to with no commitment don't realize there's a certain thing that soul ties that this sex thing is more than just a physical encounter it's a spiritual one excuse me it's a spiritual one and we get go out there and we end up with a trail of kids from multiple mothers same thing women with you Multiple kids by multiple fathers. No stability in the home. Why? Because there's no balance between feminine and masculine energy. You're doing the best you can. If you're a good person, you're doing the best you can as a man to try to make sure all your kids are doing good. But now you're split because they're in different places and you're trying to invest yourself in homes. It's nothing more frustrating. And I can tell you this as a man because I've done it. Nothing more frustrating than trying to manage multiple homes because you created kids with multiple people. Married or not, every time that you don't make it work, you leave something behind that you're still responsible for. And women, value who you are enough to save yourself for someone who values you even greater. We both have culpability in this current situation and where we're at. And it's gonna take a united effort to come together and understand it and teach it. The more you spurn marriage, the more you enter into an environment of chaos. It's proven over thousands of years. Marriage has a purpose. Now I'm not telling you how your marriage should look, but I'm telling you it has a purpose. On that note, I'm going to get off of here. Like I said, I have a lot to do. I kind of came in a little over what I wanted to do, but I definitely didn't go as long as I could normally go. But I had to leave that with you. I hope that it touches some people. I hope that it moves some people. And we begin to think. And that's what I have for you today. Don't forget, show your love, show your support. We need it at the Odyssey Project. On that note, I am out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Look, there's something I say uh, when speaking to people who are followers of the work I do at the Visionetics Institute, Institute which is about changing your life uh, in performance, in mental health, um, in everything. This is, this is some of the work I do in my business. And it's something I say with them that I don't normally say with you guys. But I'm going to say it here. Those who follow me across the board know, know this and, and are used to hearing it. But I live my life every day. I live my life on full. Why? So that when I leave this place, I die on E. What does that mean? That means I'm not going to leave anything undone. When I leave this place, I'm going to have written every book I can possibly write. I will have written every lecture and spoken every lecture. I will have counseled and touched the lives of 
uh, as many people as I can possibly touch and mentor and, and lead. I will have done everything I can in my community, in my home, and with my wife that I can possibly do. I will have no regrets. I will take. I will not take to my grave my potential. That's what dying on E means. I'm going to live my life on full every day so that I don't die on E. That's my challenge to you. On that note, I'm out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Uh, people talk Real about talk, it, like, all of the elements.